Hey guys, I'm gonna be going over some quick tips on how to earn the most money every day. Now to my OG drivers, if you have anything to add to help out any new drivers, do leave a comment down below. So let's get right into number one. Number one would be to know which offers to accept and which offers to decline. If you end up accepting a low paying offer, you could be wasting your time and losing out on money. So it's very important to know which offers are profitable and which offers are not profitable that are going to end up wasting your time and a lot of times end up causing frustration. So I'm going to go over a few offers you should definitely not be accepting. Here's one right here, $3.50 for 1.2 miles. Now the miles look awesome. It could be tempting, but this is an offer you do not want to accept. Would you want to end up waiting at a restaurant for $3.50, get stuck in traffic for $3.50, or have trouble finding an apartment at a big apartment complex? or have an issue finding somebody's home all for $3.50. These offers are not even worth accepting. They could really cause you some frustration. Plus you're not barely making anything. You're having to use your own car to deliver somebody's order for $3.50. So some things to think about. Here is another offer, $12.07. Now, of course, this looks like a good offer, but if you look at the miles, the mileage is 19.9 miles. The miles are just too high. This is what I call a backwards offer. Miles are high, pay is low just not even worth your time. This particular offer would have taken me far out of my zone into another city. Again, you have to take into consideration a possible way at a restaurant, getting stuck in traffic in this particular offer, the freeway that it would have sent me on if I accepted it, I would be sitting in traffic. And then let's say you get to the customer's apartment complex and then you start having a hard time finding the customer. These offers are just not worth it. You could be losing out on money because a better offer could have came in while you were on this offer. And a lot of these offers cause frustration because you accepted it and it's a low paying offer and then you run into all kinds of issues. So these are offers that you do want to decline. Now offers that I like to accept are within the $2 per mile ratio. So for example, if an offer came in for $10, I would want the mileage to be around five miles give or take. This would be within the $2 per mile ratio. Now, of course, everybody's market is going to vary. Um, some people say that they can't do the $2 in their market. $1.50 works a lot better for them. So you got to do what works best for you. Of course, if a $2 per mile offer came in or a $3 per mile offer came in, you're definitely going to accept it. But I think you need to have your cutoff line. What is the minimum you'll accept? So the minimum that I'll accept is $6. I usually don't like to go below $6. Now, on occasion, I have taken a $5 and some change offer, for example, $5.56 for 1.2 miles, but I want the mileage to be super, super low with the lower paying miles. Again, my cutoff is $6. Tip number two would be don't worry about your acceptance rate. Worrying about your acceptance rate could cause you to lose money because you're accepting these low paying offers, backwards offers. What you need to focus on is the pay and the mileage. Again, you need to set your standard. Again, my standard is $2 per mile. So again, if an offer comes in for $10, I want the mileage to be around five miles, give or take. So you definitely don't need to worry about your acceptance rate. You will not be deactivated for a low acceptance rate and you won't be deactivated for declining offers. Now to tell you what my current acceptance rate, I actually just looked at it. I was a little bit surprised of how low it is. Like, wait a minute here. Um, I mean, it's my acceptance rate is not like 80, 90% ever. It's usually pretty low. Um, I would say like in the 40, 30% range, but right now, believe it or not, my acceptance rate is 2%. Um, so right there tells you, you will not be deactivated. I've been driving for four years now. And if that was the case, they would have deactivated me a long, long time ago. Tip number three would be to find the best times to drive, but you also always want to check in your opportunities to see if there's any 
promos that are being offered or any challenges because of course if there is a promo during a certain day or time or a challenge you're gonna want to go out there during those times to really maximize your earnings if you're not sure where your opportunities are you'll go to the three lines in your top left hand corner you'll tap on that you're gonna see inbox earn with rides and then opportunities you can check in there now one day you may see maybe one thing but if you check back the next day sometimes they add things in there so it's always a good idea to check in advance and then kind of plan out your schedule from there now when it comes to the best days to drive a lot of people probably agree with me of course it's going to vary from market to market but my favorite times and days to drive would be Friday Saturday and Sunday on the weekends and during dinner time dinner time can start around five sometimes it's a little later it just really depends but people like to order dinner that's when I see higher paying offers because they get home from work or they've had a long day they don't feel like cooking and they want somebody to deliver their food that's my favorite time to go out and drive but of course it's going to vary from market to market couple other time frames to try out if you're not sure would be breakfast time I've heard from some people breakfast can be really really good for them then of course there is the lunchtime period um, you can go out there and test those in your market see which ones are the best times in your market and then of course go out during those times and maximize your earnings tip number four would be maximizing your tax write-offs now a lot of people forget there are actually a lot of things we can write off when doing this job things that we purchase or use to help us get the job done. Now, if you earn 600 or more on any of the apps, you're gonna receive a 1099 and you're gonna have to pay taxes on this amount. That's why it's important to maximize your deductions so you can minimize how much you have to pay back in taxes. So some things that you can write off are mileage, which is a huge one. That's why it's important to track your mileage. Some other things you can write off are things that you purchase to get the job done, like a hot bag, power bank to charge your phone, drink care, or wagon to help you deliver groceries, even a flashlight for those nighttime deliveries. If you're looking for an app that will track everything in one place, there is an app called Solo, which I've mentioned before. You can track your mileage, input expenses like a hot bag or a phone holder you purchased. The app will also help you estimate your state and federal taxes, track your income, and in certain cities, there is the Pay Guarantee and Smart Schedule, which just launched in even more cities, which is pretty awesome. Solo is constantly updating their app to help us gig workers maximize our earnings and keep track of our earnings all in one place. A new cool feature that Solo recently added is the benefit center within the app, which shows you even more earning opportunities, health and wellness section. So if you don't have insurance but need to see a doctor, they have a low cost option. Tools and equipment section. So if you're looking for an affordable phone plan, they also have a vehicle section that has ways to save on gas or your EV charging as well as options for new tires and maintenance for your vehicle which is actually pretty awesome solo does have a few different subscription plans depending on what your needs are but do keep in mind your solo subscription would also be a write-off as you would be using this for business use if you are interested in trying out solo I do have my link down in the description for a 14-day free trial if you decide you've been liking solo and you sign up for a subscription plan you will get a $10 sign up bonus you just need to have your PayPal or Venmo account link to receive the payout. Again, if you're interested in trying out Solo, I will leave the link down in the description um, so you can give it a try. Bottom line is do keep track of your mileage and any expenses while doing this job because it is a tax write-off. That way you are maximizing your deductions. Tip number five would be communicating with the customer. Sometimes this can result in an additional tip. Now you don't want to rely on this, but communicating with the customer if let's say you get to the restaurant and the restaurant tells you it's going to be 15 20 minutes till the order's ready you find it reasonable to wait for the order first of all and then you let the customer know hey the restaurant just told me it's going to be a 15 to 20 minute wait i'm going to hang out wait for your order i'm going to let you know when i'm on my way once the order is done the customers really appreciate this i've had this happen a few times where i've communicated with the customer that the restaurant was
was running behind. I'm sitting here waiting for your order. I'll let you know when I'm on my way. And then later on, I got an additional tip, which is greatly appreciated by us, but the customer appreciates the communication. Letting them know what's going on sometimes can result in an additional tip. And for the final tip, tip number six would be to multi-app. So I initially started off with Grubhub, as many of you guys know. Over time, Grubhub started slowing down. If I just relied on that one app, I definitely wouldn't have been making as much money as I could. Having multiple apps fills in dead spots when you have one app that maybe slows down or the orders just kind of stop. So what I do when I multi-app is I turn on all of my apps, Grubhub, DoorDash, Uber Eats, and Spark. Now when the offers come in, I look at the offer, see which one's reasonable. I take the offer that best fits me. Like I said, I have my $2 per mile ratio. So once I find a reasonable offer, I accept it. I will then pause my other apps until I get about five-ish minutes to drop off or less. Then I'll turn on my other apps and try to line up my next order. This will keep your wheels to moving. This will help you maximize your earnings. Now, I do know that a lot of apps do have a waiting list. We are kind of around the holidays. I know the apps are wanting more drivers because it can get busier um, during the holidays. So right now is definitely a good time to sign up for other apps if you've been thinking about it. If you're thinking about DoorDash or Spark Driver, I do have my link in the description. There is also Uber. Uber Eats and Instacart, which I still need to give a try, but having other apps does help you maximize your earnings. So you're not just relying on one app. And when you rely on one app, it can be slow at times. You definitely want to be able to maximize your earnings by driving for other apps. So those are my tips. Again, if you have any other tips to help any new drivers out, do leave them down below. If you found this video helpful, please give the video a like, consider subscribing if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.